offensive side of the ball, and just kind of your update us on recruiting moving forward, and especially with you guys not allowing any official visits until the fall. It might have been expected that with your patience, it was going to be a little slower for you guys as far as signing a bunch of guys right away. Rookie, That's right. You guys right away. Yes, sir. Well, I think that uh, you know, obviously, our recruiting is always about the relationships and. And getting guys on campus. I mean, that's what that's what we're um, that's what our job is as coaches to get them on campus. And obviously, we haven't been able to do that until recently. Get them on campus, and so we knew it was going to be a little bit slower as far as maybe some of the guys that might be committing to us. But um, once we get a chance to get them on a campus and, and get them around us and, and just get to know them and, and get to know the families. Um, it usually has a little bit of a trigger effect, and, and uh, fortunately, we've had some momentum right now with with a couple guys committing to us and, and great guys, and more importantly, great people and great character. And so um, I think you'll see here in the, in, the, in the future too, here in the next coming months, that we'll have some, uh, some more guys you know, you know, coming on board. So, so we're excited about it. Now, now that we're back to in-person recruiting, what did you maybe take away from the year, the COVID year of recruiting, and maybe some of the things you had to institute into how you went about the process that you just decided, hey, that, that really worked out well. I'm just going to add that to the repertoire moving forward. Yeah, obviously we had to learn how to use technology, first off, and just be able to be as creative as we possibly could in, in regards to um, just getting to know these kids. You know, like I said earlier, just so important that we're around them. And, uh, and be able to shake their hands and that sort of thing. And we weren't, weren't able to do that. So we had to be creative and uh, a lot of Zoom calls, obviously. Um, and just, um, I, I think what we learned too is that um, these kids, some of them, you know, will make some decisions before they really dive in and get to know us in person. And so some guys came off the board just because of that situation. And we're fine with that because I think the most important thing for us is that making sure Coach Sweeney gets to meet these guys and be able to make sure we develop that relationship in person. And, um, and so we missed out you know, a few guys just because they're, they were a little bit more ready to uh, make a decision, even though they might not have been able to visit places as much. So that was a little surprising, at least from my point of view, that some guys were ready to make a decision and they haven't really spent a whole lot of time with the coaching staff and being on campus and uh, being with some teammates. Everybody so. is worried about depth, but talking about depth in the quarterback room, losing Bubba, now you may be a little bit thin. How concerned yeah. are you? And kind of what is your plan heading into the season? Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of experience behind DJ and, and, and even Hunter doesn't have a whole lot. Yeah, really, um, really not concerned. I, I'm really excited. I think. Um, we're gonna have five guys that um, I feel I feel really good about. I mean, obviously there's a lot to do. Um, it is a little more thin than most years, um, but as you all recall, the year that we won the national championship in 2018, um, after that fourth game, after losing Kelly, you know, it was it was Trevor and Chase and Ben Batson and. And then it was Hunter Renfro. <laughs> so it was, uh, you know, two guys that you felt good about. Um, but we're going to be, we're going to have, we're going to be deeper this year. Um, now it's a matter of getting them ready to play, obviously. So obviously losing Bubba, we, we lost that number, obviously, a, number, a little bit more depth. Um, you know, coming in in, in June is very, very hard um, to you know, learn the offense and be very, very comfortable with it. But I've been very impressed with, um, you know, Will Taylor and also with uh, Billy Wiles. Um, and I think both those kids are going to be capable and going to be able to help us. Um, and obviously, you know, you got um, DJ who has more experience than Trevor did going into Trevor's freshman year when we won the whole thing, you know. So I really feel I I'm, I'm really not – concerned I'm, I'm I'm more anxious and more ready because I know I have enough guys you know I have five guys that we're going to be able to work with and uh, they're all eager and willing to learn and, and get better and and, uh, and and I really haven't seen the two freshmen do anything yet because we haven't started practice yet so uh, but I've here I've heard they're doing very well and then you know I think the, the last thing I'd say is as a freshman the, the biggest thing is how fast can you learn it and be comfortable to be able to manage and, and just you know get us in the right play and, and, and just be able to you know manage the operation and uh, I think I have two guys that are smart enough to be able to do that so 
So I think we're going to be fine, um, and I'm just anxious and excited to work with these guys and, and uh, see what we got at the end of camp. Did you like, take a serious look at the portal? Like, how, how, how involved was that? We did not. No, we did not. No, I think it's such a, as you all know, Coach Sweeney's uh, and, and our program's uh, philosophy on that. We just really feel that, you know, letting these guys earn it that are here um, and rewarding them for their hard work. Um, and so we're really trying to avoid that as much as possible. So I never contacted anybody. Um, and so, I mean, we might have had a few conversations about it, but it was nothing that was something that was serious at all. Do you feel like you have someone that can be that Chase Price type guy who can come in and be a confident back over? Is that something you're hoping to develop throughout camp? Yeah, no, I, I really do. I think there's a couple guys that, that uh, you know, don't have a, much experience, but neither did Chase have much experience until that Syracuse game, you know? Um, so, you know, Chase did something special in that game and, and uh, the team rallied around him and that sort of thing. We have guys on this team that are capable of doing something like that for sure. Um, you know, and I know Tyson is a guy that, um, you know, is, is improving daily um, and he's getting better and better. And uh, I really feel like, you know, he's going to be back sooner than we think. Um, sometime during the season, you know, he's going to be back. and so. Um, I really feel like um, his, where his mindset is right now, he, he's doing a great job of, of, of getting ready as fast as he possibly can um, without rushing it, you know. And then Hunter Helms, I'm telling you, this kid uh, from Columbia that's been here for a year now has really done a good job of really understanding this offense. Um, and, man, he's as, he's as smart as any of the guys in the room right now as far as just knowing it. And that's the biggest thing, like I said earlier, as a young guy, and that's the first step is just really understanding and knowing um, this offense inside and out. And that allows you to play faster. That allows you to perform at a, at a better, um, at a higher rate. And, and so he did a good job. He got in there a handful of times last year. And so he's got a little bit of experience. And, and then, like I said, we got those two young guys that are going to be here too, and I feel really good about them, uh, at least where they are right now. I'm just anxious to get started with them, you know. Do you have like a time frame goal for Tyson, or does he have a goal? For no, I mean, there's no time frame. I mean, this this injury is is obviously you know a lengthy injury, so um, I just know that he's doing very well. He's working his tail off. I'm I'm really proud of of Tyson. You know, as you guys know that, you know, he's been through a lot in the last year. I mean, he's had his house burned down, uh, grandparent pass away, uh, broke his hand, out for COVID protocol, and then getting COVID in the spring, just when we needed him to really be around and missed a handful of practices in the spring. And then obviously this injury, um, the last day of spring. And, and uh, But I'll tell you what, he's really learning some life lessons and he's really, um, he's really maturing. I mean, this kid is a great kid and just anxious to work and get better. And he's really been able to develop a toughness about him because he's had this adversity and he's learned to overcome some of these, these adverse things that's happened in his life. And so um, I'm really anxious for him to get back. I know he is too. Um, so just really proud of where he is right now. DJ got a lot of reps in the spring. So now with these new guys coming in, how do you kind of divvy that up once fall practice starts to make sure that not only does he get the work that he needs, yeah, absolutely. I think five's a good number, really, as far as going into camp. You know, that's what you normally would like to have, five guys in camp, um, plenty of uh, enough arms so that they don't get worn down. Um, but like you said, DJ needs to get his reps, but at the same time need to monitor and make sure that he's not overthrowing. And we also need to get some other guys ready to go, obviously. So, um, so it's going to be really important that um, that I do a good job of, of making sure the right guys are in there and making sure that um, they're getting enough reps so that they, because we all know it's, it's all about developing by getting reps. You know, the more experience you get, the more examples you can teach off of and the more that they can learn from. And so um, I've always been able to do a good job of, of really rotating those guys and, and giving everybody an opportunity you know, to, to shine out there. And um, and so it's going to be important to do that. And at the same time, like you said, DJ's got to get his reps with the ones and still can, can, you know, have that consistency with those guys and being on the same page. Very, very important. What was the plan for, Go ahead, Matt. Okay. I was say, what was the plan for DJ this summer? And how did you guys challenge him? Where did you want to see him improve? And what kind of feedback have you got? 
Yeah. Um, well, first and foremost, you know, uh, DJ's going into his second year. So um, I always want to challenge him and, and all the other quarterbacks in improving in their leadership. You know, it's a new role for DJ now. He's not the backup. He's the guy. So um, it's very important that he takes a step forward in the leadership department. And one of the things that we do in the summer is we um, do our skills and drills, which are player-led practices. And, and it's a really, really cool experience for those guys, especially my quarterbacks, because they have an opportunity to grow as a leader because they have, they're in charge of it. And they're in charge of making sure that you know, the, the uh, session is going smoothly and they're, and they're on pace and all those things. And so his leadership is going to be critical as we move forward. He's, a, he's such a nice guy. He's, he, everybody loves this kid. Um, and he just needs to be demanding. That's another thing. He needs to hold himself accountable first, which he's done a good job of. And then he needs to hold this team accountable. And that's hard to do when you're such a nice guy. You know, it's hard to, you don't want to step on toes. But um, so I've challenged him in that part of his leadership of, of holding guys accountable and really, you know, stepping up in that department. Um, obviously, there's so many, there's plenty of things physically that he can work on. Obviously, getting stronger, getting faster, making sure his weight isn't too much. You know, he's a big kid, you know, and he doesn't have a whole lot of body fat. It's just a big kid. And so, uh, but he has to really do a good job with his nutrition and, and just making sure that his weight doesn't get too high because I want to be I want to see him be explosive and um, Everybody's a different type of runner. He's an he's a really good athlete smooth athlete that can that can really hurt you Not just with his arm, but also with 